Friday night, six oh nine. How about that? It's Friday night. Yeah, seriously, this is crazy for us. We're both in our own houses. It's it's actually pretty much the time we normally get on. Um, so for everybody that you know normally eats their dinner while they watch us, perfect. You're yeah. you're you're set. Yeah, and and I am a little confused though because we've done like four different podcasts uh, in these last two weeks. So I know it's 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 <laughs> actually kind of crazy that we've we've done so many and. Um, you know, for those of you that don't know, we did one with, uh, so last Wednesday we did Ron Gallagher. We talked to him on our podcast and then he had us on his podcast on Wednesday night. Um, but I don't think it's live yet. I think he said a couple of oh. weeks and it'll be produced and it'll be live. It was kind of cool though. We actually went into his, uh, into a studio and did a, like a real, a, a real a professional podcast right. instead of in our houses. <laughs> yeah. It's intimidating doing it the real deal, but uh, but this is I, I, this is fun how we do it this way. I think so too. I think so too. And I do have my at least I got my mic on a boom. That 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 that's uh, close. I don't have that. Mine's sitting over here. But I think I, I, actually I think our mics our mics sound pretty good. Maybe not as professional as what we had there, but I think they sound pretty good. Oh. Well, so, and speaking what, of gear, yeah, speaking what, of gear, what did you do? I got went crazy this week uh, on Sunday. I was just cruising around the internet and happened to buy a, a bike and it, it got here in like three days. And it's funny. I, I actually have not bought a, uh, a bike. Um, well, that's a lie. I lie, buy, lie, buy a lot of bikes. No, I'm just kidding. I haven't bought a bike um, in six years. Wow. Which for, for a triathlete, that's a long, yeah. that's a yeah. long time. Yeah. Um, the craziest part is I basically bought the same bike I have already. <laughs> yeah, I love this. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'll I'll grab it. So we show the show the YouTubers. Yeah. So brand new Argon 18. Argon 18, love it. E 119 Tri Plus, no disc brakes. Yeah. Yes, old you're, school. You're the, yep. You're the anti disc brake. I am the anti disc brake. <laughs> Um, I've raced all over the world on, and ridden my bike. I, I think it's 50 or 60,000 miles at no yeah. point. I've ever felt like I needed disc brakes on a triathlon bike. And so it's, the thing is, is there's no high end bikes anymore without disc brakes. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I actually purposely bought that bike. Um, it's was, you know, a couple of years ago, the highest end Argon 18 you could buy. Um, but it was the last model and the last year of the model mm -hmm. that, um, they didn't have disc brakes. So I've actually been hunting this bike down for a while That's and great. got a deal that I just couldn't say no to. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm super, I'm actually super excited, but I, I think you know, I, people are going to judge me. And they're like, why would you buy uh, a bike without disc brakes? Well, um, okay. So first of all, you don't have to change your wheel sets. And isn't that special? Yeah, and a that, lot of that's wheels. The, that's right. And once you go to disc brakes, you got to abandon all your rim brake wheels. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's thousands of dollars, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, minimum. And, and here's the thing. Uh, there is a tremendous amount of, uh, uh, of rim brake wheels available right now. Mm -hmm. oh, Everyone yeah. that's buying a new bike, yeah. they are getting rid of their, yeah, uh, right. of their, of their wheels and there's still high quality wheels out there. Right. right. And, um, so yeah, I actually uh, actually bought a new disc wheel uh, two weeks ago. That was a rim brake. Got a smoking yeah. deal on that. Yeah. And um, now I'm looking for a nice front wheel to go with to go to go with this baby. So yeah. uh, I'm out there looking for. for yeah. <laughs> but I'm, oh, once again, I'm shopping the used bin, which is uh, which which I actually I don't mind. Yeah. Um, you know the wheels are so bulletproof these days, and the, you know, mm -hmm. the carbon layup is so strong. Yeah. Um, I was talking to uh, Chris Thornham about this yeah. a couple months ago, and he's like, "Yeah, when we started Flow Wheels, we were yeah. so careful, yeah, you know, about the carbon and like make, when we we're when we we're packing everything, being so careful. And that you know, a couple of years in, they're just throwing it around because it it doesn't yeah. break, right? It's, it just yeah, for the most part, it's 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 very very sturdy, and they build the wheels to be extremely sturdy because you know, yeah. that you're having a lot of uh, of forces go through uh, go mm -hmm. through the wheels, so." Yeah. Yeah. No, that's uh, that's true. And now, when you have a bike, you how many wheel sets do you typically have? Like, it would... mm, just two. Yeah. Yeah. I have. I mean, ultimately, I have training uh, training set, right. and I have a race set. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So just two. So and... two two wheel sets plus a disc. 
no no the way the race set would be the disc oh the race set is the disc okay yeah because i you know me i I never race without a disc i mean that's not going to (laughs) happen the only thing that i'm contemplating is buying another front wheel that is more more shallow so i have a an 80 actually it's 88 millimeter front wheel i'm contemplating you know buying a 40 millimeter front wheel just for when it's really, really windy. Yeah. Uh, Cause there has been some times when I'm like, ah, oh, man, it would have been better to have. And I have a training wheel that's a 40 millimeter. Right. And I, I can use it, but it's really, it's quite narrow cause it's pretty old. I think it's, I, I got to think it's 12, 14 years old to be mm-hmm. honest. With you. Mm-hmm. And it's so, it's, it's the, it's pretty yeah. narrow. And I noticed like I put a 25 on it and it just looks ridiculous. Yeah. And so I am contemplating that. Yeah. Yeah, but I do have. How about, how about you? How many? What do you? What do you kind of have? I do two wheel sets plus a disc. I have, uh, um, yeah, I, my training set and then my reset, and a disc on top of that, and then a disc on top. Yeah, and I I should also get a um, a narrow front or a shallower front wheel, but I I haven't at this point. Um, it's just nice if you got a really windy course. You know, we've gone and raced uh, Hawaii 70.3 a couple of times, and we've still got that on our radar, Kona, and, and that there, they don't allow you to use a disc. Right. So that, that's nice to have another weapon in your... Even at the 70.3, they don't allow you to wear, ride a disc? They, oh, well, now I got to, no, they don't. Um, yeah, because it's the same course. It's the same, uh, yeah, it's the same part out the Javi that's really windy. And I, I hope they keep that rule forever, Yeah. right? Because that'll keep the myth that riding a disc in the wind is no is not safe. And let's keep, let's <laughs> so keep you, that myth so that right. it'll make me better. That's so, right. It works to your advantage. It right? works to my advantage. I love right. that myth. I want to keep that myth going as yeah. long as possible. Everyone listening, riding a disc in the wind yeah. is so dangerous. Right. You don't want to do it. If you're in the 50 to 54 age there group, you go. Yeah. man. Anyone else, I don't care. But if you're in that one, don't do it. I love it. <laughs> no. It's, you know, the wind is, you know, with the the deeper wheels and the uh, the front wheel does, does certainly is something to be concerned about with uh, crosswinds. But it to me, it's always the unpredictable winds that is the worst. So even like biking down on North Shore or uh, Lake Mead Boulevard, you know, when you go down, um into those uh those valleys if you will and you can get hit by that wind on you know unexpectedly and uh that yeah. that can get a little hairy but i tell you the only time i re- i really feel it is if i have the deep section front wheel yeah yeah if i have the the 40 i don't mm-hmm. feel that at all oh good but, yeah. but i know like if i have that deep section yeah. wheel and you get those crosswinds there you can feel it so it's interesting right at kona they should be saying you can only have a 40 mil front wheel. Yeah, right, right. That right. would be way safer than saying you yeah. can't have a disc. Yeah, and I don't think there is that rule. There isn't. It's you just, see people- It's just the uh, disc. They, they had the old, what was it? The Zip 1080. Mm-hmm. It was, it was you know, um, instead of, what was it? Uh, 1,080 mil, mil, mm-hmm. mil. Yeah, it's yeah. huge. And that was specifically, they, they made that for Kona to get ready from the disc rule, but yeah. it's actually worse. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, but anyways, that's like, like I said, I hope they keep that rule in place forever. (laughs) Sarcastically. (laughs) Exactly. Just for me. me. All right. So now you've got your frame set. You don't have any parts to it though. I have no parts. uh, Cause I I, I literally got it on Sunday and then it was weird. Cause I'm like, it was processing for a while. It actually Mm -hmm. came from Canada. So it was processing for a while. And all of a sudden I get a, oh, it's going to be UPS is delivering today. And it was on Wednesday. And I, Cause I wasn't going to buy anything until I knew for sure the bike was coming. Cause you, yeah, know, you, right. you never know. It's like, well, maybe yeah. there was an error in the system. That's why I got it so cheap. And so the bike came on Wednesday and I unpacked it all, made sure all the parts were there. Oh. And it was awesome. Cause it was, you know, I got, sm- like I said, I got a great deal and it was all brand new, still like sealed mm-hmm. in the Argon 18 box. Okay. And um, so I took all the parts up, made sure everything was there. And then I was like, okay, now what do I do here? Mm. You know, I got a really good deal on this bike. So I can, my, my budget is I can pretty much put any groups that I want on it. I love it. And so the decision, oh my gosh, John, I have been like, it's been keeping me up at night. Yeah, yeah. I bet. <laughs> the stress yeah. of buying a new bike and trying to figure out, you know, what to do and, and, and how to build it out from everything from the cockpit 
Yeah. I'm considering a, even, you know, going into a semi custom cockpit, mm-hmm. um, even though it comes with a cockpit, uh, but I'm, I'm considering like an, an, um, an aero coach yeah. um, or drag to zero cockpit. Mm. And then uh, things go through my mind. Well, then what's my hydration situation? And yeah. I, I really got, I have it completely dialed in. I think I'm super aero with what mm-hmm. I have. I'm like, well, just keep it. Like why, mm-hmm. you know, why mess with a good, why mess with the, why mess with oh, the totally. Okay. So let's, let's establish that the current bike you have is going to stay on the trainer. Yeah. So it's, you don't want to, you don't want to dismount or dismantle that to build up the other one. So that's a good, that's a yeah. good thing to know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, and I, well, I'm actually going to take the bottom bracket out because okay. it was a $500 bottom bracket. Mm, mm-hmm. So, and I just installed it like yeah. two months ago so yeah. that's coming out i'm going to put in an old bottom bracket because i don't yeah. care yeah and i'm going to take the crank um off because it's, it has a power meter in the crank and i don't need that i can just take the power meter from the, the yeah the yeah, yeah. Right. so i'm going to take that i'm going to take but here's the thing <laughs> this is the first th- these are the problems we go through right yeah, is, yeah. is i'm thinking about going 12 speed mm. and do the chain rings work with a 12 speed chain mm. Hmm. That, yeah that's a good question i don't know uh, yeah and, and and nobody knows mm. you start reading and people are saying that they they do it like in the tour de france this year they were having trouble getting 12 speed chain rings and, and people oh. were just running 11 speed I, I read all i've read so much of it mm-hmm. and then they're saying but it won't be the perfect shifting it'll be it'll be very very good but it won't be perfect is it the chain that's changing between the chain is changing the chain is a little bit narrower so and that may not interact well with your front cranks interesting yeah with the with with the chain rings in the front exactly yeah yeah and uh so i had a um a custom built um chain ring that is (laughs) because i'm crazy i have a carbon fiber custom built chain ring yeah nice and i waited for like three months for this thing to come uh-huh. out of England. And I go into their website and they say only compatible with 11 speed. We'll let you know when the 12 speed, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, man, I really just want to do it. And so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to, if I do go 12 speed, which I haven't decided yet, yeah, yeah. is I'm going to go with the 11 speed uh, chain rings for now. Mm-hmm. So if you go 12, uh, if you do go 12, ultimately, yeah. what, what gear are you trying to add in? Well, it's not so much the, well, the truth of the matter is what I want to add in is um, a 32 or a 34 mm. in the, in the back. Okay. So the 12 speed, um, and I'm thinking Shimano right now, yeah. uh, the 12 speed Shimano um, can go up to a 34 and the mm-hmm. regular cage um, d- for the rear derailleur, whereas the 11 speed can only go to a 30. Okay. So yeah. I'm thinking I'm going to gain four more teeth. Yeah, that's huge. Um, which is huge, right? Because then I can run the bigger front chain ring more yeah. often. So I, I actually change out chain rings. Yeah. Um, so I could run the bigger, basically I'll have more range. Yeah. And, yeah, there's uh, plenty of courses that it's nice to have that gear. Just yeah. in, And it's nice that you wouldn't need to change anything yeah. to be able to still access it. That's, yeah. Because I run a, uh, the front is normally a 50. Five thirty nine. Okay. okay. No, no. 54, 54, 40. 50, okay. I have a 40. Mm-hmm. And so if I went 40, 34, that's getting pretty, mm-hmm. like I can, I can climb a lot of stuff at that, yeah, that, yeah. that gear ratio. Yeah. And my current setup actually is, um, cause I have the older, um, Shimano it's still, it's an 11 speed, but it's an older one. And it can only go to actually, it can only go to 28. Yeah. Um, in, in the, in the rear. So, Having that rear cassette of 28 versus yeah. um, versus 34 is big. That's huge, right? Yeah, that's big. Yeah, Mantra Blanc. Even St. George, St. right? George, like, George, yeah. You know, I've done it uh, with a 28, and I'm you know, standing up at the top of the yeah, canyon. Right. I'd rather, if I could, I'd rather just sit down and spin mm-hmm. it out. And um, and the truth of the matter is, I'm getting older, and yeah, you know, right, I'm right. assuming my power is going to decrease mm-hmm. um, as I get older. So mm-hmm. I think that there's there's that. Um, the big issue right now, though, John, honestly, is the shifting. And actually, mm-hmm. I wanted to talk to you about that. Okay. So I don't use synchro shift. 
Mm. And you do use Synchro Shift. I do. All right. So tell me about your experiences with Synchro Shift. I actually did not think I would like it because, um, you know, my heritage is mechanical shifting. And even with, even when the shifting went to click shifting, where you, you could, you know, shift it and would click and go right into the, I always turned my uh, shifters to friction shifting. So it was always smooth. I always like to just tweak it a little bit here yeah. and there. And I just like that feeling of really being in control over the front derailleur and the rear derailleur in a real fine way. It's just the way I was. And so then when I, you know, it was a big decision to actually go electronic shifting. And I was thinking I was getting a two button, but somehow I ended up with the one button synchro shift. And I'm like, I'm not going to like this. I mean, it's now, okay. So, it, it, but it, it worked a little differently. Well, than let, John, let's talk about, uh, let's tell people what synchro shift is. Yeah, shifting. that's, a, that's okay. what I was going to do. Because it worked a little differently than I thought. I thought that it was shifting for you, but it doesn't. So synchro shift is you have one button on the right and one button on the left. And you can move your um, your your rear and front derailleur. Uh, well, the computer in the shifting will move the rear and the front derailleur based upon uh, which button you're pushing. Oh, I'm not explaining that well. Um, your the, well, the front derailleur will shift only when you reach a certain gear ratio that you pre-programmed. Uh, otherwise, you're really just controlling your rear derailleur. And then uh, at some point, you reach a certain co gear combination of your front and the back. And uh, you would have pre-programmed it to automatically go from the small chain ring in the front to the big chain ring in the front, or vice versa. And you can program that to change. It's all about gear ratios. Yeah. So you you can uh, I don't have mine set up, but you can uh, you set it up so that um, well gear ratio is just the ratio of what number of teeth you have in the front to the back in essence, and so uh, and that in essence describes how uh, how effective the gear is in in, uh, in rotating the rear wheel, um, and so you the synchro shift uh, will control the front derailleur uh, when it's time to go to a different gear ratio. Boy, I'm not explaining that well at all, am I? You really are not. No. <laughs> so let's, just, let, let's talk about your experience. So if you're riding and let's say you're, you're flat mm -hmm. and you're in the big chain ring, yeah. kind of middle of the middle of the, of the, of the cassette in the back mm -hmm. and you start going uphill and mm -hmm. you start saying, Oh, I need a better gear ratio or an easier gear ratio. So you start moving the rear derailleur um, to the, to bigger, to bigger cogs. Yeah, yeah. At what point does, well, first of all, in synchro shift, my understanding is you get to a certain point where it's going to automatically shift, switch the front derailleur mm -hmm. for you. Right. Yeah, yeah. So you, to make it, to make it easier. And you don't have any, con when you're riding, you don't have control over when that happens. You, you, that's right. When you're riding, you don't. You have limited control. Actually, there is an option, but that that that's correct. Okay, so on a normal setup, you would have two buttons to control your rear, your front derailleur, and you'd have two buttons to control your rear derailleur. All right. On one, on a, yeah, like on a road setup, you would have that on a road setup. Yeah, and yeah. so the synchro shift, you have one button on one hand and one button on the other, and so you're right. So let's say I'm starting in the small. Uh, gear in the front and in the big cog in the back so like you're going to go uphill and let's say i'm starting to go downhill and i start shifting to bigger gear ratios and so what that does it starts moving the rear derailleur over to a smaller cog and then at some point the gear ratio is going to be such that you need to move the chain to the big gear in the front yep. and that happens then the next time i hit that click then the uh, front derailleur will move the, um, the chain to the front, to the bigger gear in the front, and it may actually slide the um, rear derailleur to a bigger cog in the back because it's all about gear ratio. Yeah. And so you can, you can program that ahead of time to shift at a certain gear ratio uh, so that you, you have very sequential gear ratios. And the same thing, you can, you can set it in the way that you go down in those gear ratios as well. And it would be a different combination 
uh, that it will will control the front and the rear derailleur at the same time. So it's interesting you, you said, you know, it's kind of, a, I don't know, not the normal way. But the last time, guess this, I've been doing some research on this. The last time Shimano um, produced um, levers that were dual with two buttons mm -hmm. was 2013. Oh, wow. It's been single shift ever since. Wow, interesting. Yeah. Okay, but now their next groups that didn't come out till 2016. But from 2016 forward, it's been synchro shift. Yeah. On time trial bikes. Yeah. So well, and, and I can say I've actually liked it. And so okay. once I started using it, I actually really uh adapted pretty quickly because now all I'm doing is I'm controlling gear ratio. Yeah. And, it's and I'm not or harder, right? That's right. I'm not and it and it's a very sequential gear ratio. So in the past, you can chain, you know, you leave your chain on the big ring as long as your chain isn't rubbing. And, and uh, but, but then when you do change it to the small ring, well, now you've got to go back and find that other gear yeah. that is sequentially correct. And with synchro trip, that takes that all out. You, you can have gear ratios that go very sequentially and it's really um, quite nice. Okay. Cause one of the things I've been trying to do is find the old 2003. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. So that's what's on my bike on, on my trainer. Is yeah. The 2003 stuff. Because I I have double buttons. Like I have two yeah. buttons for my uh, on yeah. my uh, handlebars and two on my arrow bars too. Yep. Yeah. Right. So I have a right and left. So right is for the front rear chair rear derailleur. Uh, the left is for the rear. Yeah. And. It's almost like I've been on that bike so much. I don't even think anymore. It just yeah, I shift yeah. automatically. And yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be a learning curve yeah. for my brain to get used mm -hmm. to, to get yeah. the, to get used to that. I mean, did you have a, was there a significant amount of time for you? A that... little bit, um, but I just had to get in my brain that I met, set up my right button so that the gear ratio was always getting bigger yeah. and, and the left one was always getting smaller. And so when I want to bike, you know, up a hill, I start pushing the left button I want to start going faster on a flat, I'm pushing the right button. And I don't have that intermediate gear where I need to mess with the front derailleur. Right. Okay. It, just, it will automatically um, go from, from one to the other. Uh, I don't know if I can get my bike from up here because I can show you the. Well, I can tell you this, you probably just cost me some money. Because <laughs> I'm thinking about buying all this used stuff from 2013 if I can get my hands on it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, because I was I was nervous because like I'm thinking about like I'm going into a corner and I want to dump gears fast. Mm -hmm. right? So I dump, 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 dump. And now I'm dumping off of the rear and the front. Yeah, there's you can um that is a danger. And I have dropped a chain. Yeah. Uh, a couple of times on a ride and that's where i'm trying to do exactly what you talk about where i'm trying to dump gears i'm trying to change really quickly from uh transition going uphill to downhill or downhill to uphill whichever way it is uh now what I'm you're more like when you're going down and then you take a corner right so you go down yeah. you take corners so you want to dump a lot of gears especially if you know there's a little hill yeah. on the other side well what you can do is you can program your uh shifting so that it will do um, only uh, a double shift by one gear, one mm -hmm. cog, or you can set it to two cogs or something like that. So you can control that, or you can set it to zero cogs, yeah. but then it's just the gear ratio is not gonna be as smooth between uh, uh, those, those uh, shifts. So that you do lose that capability to, you know, go all the way down in one, you know, for one direction with the rear derailleur while leaving the, um, that chain in the in the big cog in the front big big chain ring um, interesting yeah but it's but I, I like i said i i going from wanting to be able to fine tune both my front and rear derailleur i like this a lot yeah yeah um okay so the other question uh i was thinking about is well shimano is still in the if you're doing a time trial bike it's still not wireless Mm -hmm, right and uh even the, the you know the new 12 speed it's on a road bike it's wireless mm -hmm. um or sort of semi semi wireless the the, the 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 front derailleur or sorry the front switches are um are wireless but the rear is not mm -hmm. or like the back half of the bike's not this i still have to connect it all so then i was like well maybe i'll go with with sram 
and um, go completely wireless. I mean, man, that would be so easy to set up. I mean, yeah. I could have my bike built in like no no time, not having to deal with any any wires. Well, you still got to deal with the wires, I think, in the uh, handlebars. Yeah, well. in the, you're right, in in, yeah. in the handlebars. Yeah, but yeah. not not anything through the frame. Not through the frame. Yeah. So I, I did contemplate that, and then they've had 12 speed for a lot longer. Mm -hmm. But the the downside for their uh, 12 speed is they go to a uh, a 10 uh, cog, mm -hmm. and everything I've read on that is it's really inefficient at the 10. And so they have they actually have smaller uh, front chain rings because they have the they have the 10 cog in the back. Interesting. And um, so, anyways, I think I I think that you have me convinced that I'm gonna uh, with that I'm bad gonna, explanation. <laughs> you, well, no, because more I was looking for the experience, and for other people uh, that are listening, put it in the comments. I'm not buying uh, uh, this for a few, probably another week. Yeah, uh, yeah. I still want to do more research, but put in the comments like what you think if you if you've done uh, the yeah. tw the new twelve, especially if you've done the new twelve speed. Mm -hmm. I know there's some out there in the wild uh, people that are, you know have the new twelve speed and and what they think uh, about having synchro shift. And then, but then again, it, it's pretty you know it's maybe only evident if you've done the went from the two button to the one button. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to put that in a post right now. Uh, do okay. you like? Uh, Pro shift or dual button. Yep. And I don't know if SRAM's got a synchro shift or if it's if it's still. I, I honestly don't know because you know I've worked on a few uh, a few people's bikes that are SRAM, uh, like the ETAP um, group set, but I don't know the I don't know the answer to that. Okay, I'm posting that to see if we get any immediate uh, responses to that. So. Yeah, okay. that'd like be good. That. Yeah, you know, because it, it was a big shift. And actually, when I got my one button, I, I immediately went out and got the two button. But then I remember that. Yeah, but then something wasn't compatible with the two button. So then I said, oh, I'll just go with the one button. I was really reluctant. But you then don't I happen to have those two buttons stick still around, do you? Yeah, I do. Oh, you do? Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> just the bar end ones. Just the bar. That's the ones I need. Yeah, yeah, because uh, I had gotten the brakes with the single, uh, the single button, and then I went and got the bar in with two, and that's oh, what I, I, I need. The other ones. I need the brakes. Oh yeah, that's what I can't find online. Okay. Uh, I can find a left on eBay, but I can't uh, find yeah. a right and a left. Yeah, I got the bar in one, uh, the don't two button bar in one. Yeah, but they don't talk to each other properly, right? If not, you, not when the brakes are single button. Yeah. yeah. And that's part of the problem with all this electronic stuff is like, you know, com compatibility like, yeah. and, and backwards and forwards compatibility. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, then I'm, I'm, I'm kind of convinced that eventually like Shimano is going to come out with um, wireless in the front because mm -hmm. it's been a year since 12 speed has been announced. Yeah. And, they, and basically they, they didn't upgrade any of the time trial stuff. They mm -hmm. just upgraded the firmware on the last generation of right, the right. cockpit stuff. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm, well, I, honestly, John, is so fun. <laughs> I know. You know, and I think I would go wireless the next time because routing the wires, even though they're, they're you know, they're, they're soft uh, cables and ever, you know, really flexible. I have had the, the problem of them getting pinched. Oh, really? Then, I, I've then, never had a pinched cable. Yeah. And then, well, it's probably because I installed it. So, <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> not a good job. And, uh, and that did drain the battery and I had to eventually replace the cable uh, with a new cable and then I was fine. Uh, Interesting. And so going wireless, you know, that would reduce a little bit of work uh, getting down. But I bet your Argon AT is pretty easy to put that in still. Yeah, I think it's going to be really easy. Um, and especially because nothing else is on it. It's a bare frame right now. I'll do yeah. the wiring first before I do anything else. Yeah, yeah. I think it's going to be pretty... I think it'll be pretty easy to to do. I mean, I have to say that now, but you know, until I'm in my garage and swearing and cursing, all. <laughs> it all well, it all sounds easy when you're when you're when you're putting it together. But and and if you do go with the wired system, definitely. And you told, you convinced me to get the Wi-Fi uh, option or the whatever it is, the Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Uh, and I got that, and and I, it's perfect because actually, right now, it only communicates with my phone. I can't connect it to the computer. So whatever software update they did, uh, 
the connector I have is not compatible with the new software. So the newest one, um, you actually, uh, I think it's blue, the Bluetooth is in the battery. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's not even an extra component right now. Oh, I have nice. An extra okay. little thing. I think you buy that too, where you have to plug yeah. in an extra little thing, which is yeah. great. Yeah. But I, I think it's actually all uh, included. And another interesting thing is, is I don't know where on your bike your, um, your charge port is. I have it on my junction box right on my uh, stem, my, my, my uh, stern stem. So you don't have to take anything apart to get to it? No. no. Okay. So the new, the new one, it's actually, you charge through the rear derailleur. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So mine actually have to take, um, in my current bike, I have to actually take a piece off. It's really simple, a little cover off mm -hmm. to charge. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be nice to yeah. just be able to, to, to do that. Basically, the, the, they've moved the junction box into the rear derailleur. Ah, okay. So you're, you're basically skipping a skipping a, 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 a step. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. And supposedly these things shift like a dream. That's what I've been reading. Uh, like mm. it's like forty five percent faster shifting in the twelve speed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I, maybe the synchro shift will be even better if it's happening. Yeah. You know, happening faster. Um, but yeah. So now, like, you know, I guess I gotta I gotta spend some time shopping. Well, yeah. not that I haven't been, I haven't pulled the trigger on anything. I just gotta, right. I gotta spend some time. And then, you know, of course, then the next thing is, you know, do you, do you do the, you know, the, the Altegra or do I do the Dura Ace? Yeah. Um, right. Man, it's the, the up price on a, on a Dura it's Ace. Amazing. Yeah. So the rear derailleur is about 400 mm -hmm. for Shimano or yeah. for Altegra. Eight. Oh, sorry. Cosmo uh, or 800 for Dura Ace. Uh-huh. So that's a lot for the, just for the rear derailleur. Yeah. Wow. And the only difference is weight. Oh. Right. And I'm like, and it's not even that much weight. And no, it's not. Right. And so then I'm like, well, you know, I've got this super light bike and mm -hmm. do I need to save a, a couple hundred grams? Actually, I, I don't. So mm -hmm. I'll probably end yeah. up building it with Altegra. Yeah. I think um, that's what I did as well. I just could not, I could not justify the, the additional cost for the Dura Ace over the Altegra for, for the yeah. weight. I think if I was buying a bike specifically to do like another Everest thing where mm -hmm. weight was like, I wanted everything as light as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'd consider that, but right. on a time trial bike, I just, it's just not, uh, I don't know. I guess it wouldn't be fiscally responsible for mm -hmm. me to, to buy Dura Ace unless, you know, somehow I could get a great deal. Yeah. But it's all it's there's no none of this is on sale right now because it's only it's less than a year old and and we've mm -hmm. been dealing with supply chain issues right yeah, so yeah. whoever's got this stuff is selling it for full retail. Mm. What I need tough. to do is buy it. The problem is I'd like to buy it out of Europe right now because you know our dollar is so strong. Yeah, but a lot of the countries won't ship. Oh uh, really? They won't ship it, and mm. and I don't know if it's something with their agreements with Shimano that they won't. Mm -hmm. they won't ship it i can get it from england and it's like 30 or 40 dollars cheaper mm -hmm. but not enough to not enough to deal with getting it from england oh boy it's kind of crazy we think about it. we can get bike parts from from england i buy i buy a lot of stuff through a couple of websites out of england mm -hmm. i don't know do you do you do that yeah yeah it's uh and it's funny how i sometimes i have to get on my currency converter <laughs> yeah. make sure i'm you know i'm like oh that looks like a good price but then i you know, it's in pounds. Double check it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. So I think I think you have me convinced, John. I think I'm gonna go with the synchro shift, twelve mm -hmm. speed. Yeah. And um, you know, because here's the thing: this is a bike for me probably for another five or six years. So, like, yeah. I keep bikes, yeah. you know, a long time. Yeah. So I might as well do twelve speed because by the time this bike, you know, is kind of it's in its mid life cycle, I, it might be harder and harder to get eleven speed stuff. Well, and, and I think you'll know almost immediately whether or not you like the synchro or, or not. And, you know, the, the downside is you got to take it all apart to, you know, know. It back. Um, but, you know, it's, um, yeah. I mean, there has to be a reason they, they stopped doing it in 2013, right? Yeah, and right. everybody, you know, literally anyone that's riding a time trial bike that was built after 2016 that went with um di2 is running synchro shift yeah right so if there was that big of a problem you think it'd be all over the internet mm -hmm. like complaining about it and i found some complaints i did look oh yeah yeah on Soul twitch there was some complaints from, mm -hmm. from some people but 
you you think that people would be screaming and yelling and trying yeah. to to get it mm-hmm. and, and all the pros are they're running it mm-hmm. synchro, synchro shift but mm-hmm. yeah and i guess a lot of the pros though are doing single chain ring in the front too Going by, yeah yeah which i am not doing that well i had a, a colleague of ours brian put a little note card in my uh, mailbox at work that uh, he came across a race in europe where you're required to use a steel frame with the um the shifters on the down tube yeah this is the thing oh so, yeah i've actually seen some of these yeah 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 and i'm like i'm i still got one of those so <laughs> do it yeah i can see yeah. people like you know trying to change their bikes right okay they have yeah. a steel frame but it's not on the down tubes and yeah. making the, the backwards conversion yeah yeah oh that's funny but yeah that, that was the height of technology back then and uh yeah, it's interesting how unarrow uh, that type of setup is. It, you know, it, it's really quite amazing when we look at the at these bikes now and how aerodynamic they are. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, in the last, I don't know, I don't know, seven eight years, th- there, there's not that much difference. It seems like in the time trial bikes, mm-hmm. like as far as the frame. I think, um, you know, obviously your bike is quite different. Right, being yeah. you know, not having the the, the C tube, the C yeah, tube, yeah. But really, like the the general shape of the time trial bike has not really changed mm-hmm. that much. Well, that's partly a UCI issue that they've got yeah. you know so many rules over it. All right, wait, we got a couple comments here on. Uh, Dave is writing. Uh, been wanting to switch mine to synchro shifting, and using one of my double bar end to cycle through the computer screens. Oh, yeah, I heard you yeah. do that. Yeah, I haven't done that. Yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. So you can use your buttons to control your computer screen, right? And then he also writes, haven't done it yet, or even if it's possible to use the buttons to cycle through the computer. Yeah, I think it is. I do have the wireless thingy, so it already transmits gear ratio to Garmin, yeah. Yeah, yeah and I, like, I like that ability of the electronic shifting to go and look at your gear uh, setup that you had. I like it too, where you can actually, uh, after you're done riding, see how many shifts you did. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, sometimes it's like, okay, you, know, you shifted your front twenty times and you shifted your rear five hundred times. Yeah, right, right. Like, wow, you don't recognize like in a in a two or three hour ride how many times if it's you know it's rolling hills, how many times you actually shift. It's actually yeah. pretty cool to see that that yeah, that metric. Yeah. yeah. Mm. All right, let's talk about some. Or, or do you want to? Uh, get more okay what do we got so i'm curious and some other things that you're going to do then so your chain obviously you'll get a new chain um for whatever groups that you do get yeah and i'm pretty sure i'm going to go 12 speed so it'll be a 12 okay. speed chain and the chains have changed a bit so that's interesting so uh that'll be good um pedals you got to buy another set of pedals <laughs> or do you already have them yeah i gotta buy another set of pedals yeah and uh that's another one i've contemplated actually switching to uh speed play Oh really? What do you have now? I have the Sh- I have Shimano. Okay. And I really, I mean, I really like them. Yeah. Uh, but it, you know, everything's you know, whatever you read says the speed play, the arrow speed play. Yeah. It's yeah. more aerodynamic, and I'm like, yeah. why am I giving up watts? Yeah, yeah. right, right, right. Um, now for training, I love having the Shimano because it's a wider plate. Mm. Like if I don't clip in properly, I'm still fine. Okay. Um, but if you look at, I mean, start to look at a lot of most pro most pro triathletes that aren't sponsored or you know mm-hmm. by shimano they're going to be on they're on those speed play arrows yeah yeah so yeah, i've not made that shift i've got time pedals and and uh yeah the speed play everyone raves about the arrow aspect yeah. of them so the, the the hard thing is is i've got three or four bikes now that's no all of the same pedals and it's so nice like get your cleat in the right spot and everything's dialed in so i don't know about that but so yes i i'm, I'm gonna need new pedals no. seat you're gonna buy the same seat same saddle i am going to buy the exact same one between the yeah. trainer and the and the and and the outside bike yeah that's a definite i want to i want to basically it be seamless you know because the yeah, geometry yeah. of the bike is exact yeah yeah and i want to get it i want to get it as basically as close to the same indoor as outdoor as i can so same bars same bars okay as, like i said i was contemplating going to like the more those ergonomic bars Mm-hmm. I still might at some point, but for now it's going to be the same bars. Okay. All right. So now that that's sort of the the hardware of the bike. 
Uh, what are you doing for toolkit? So you're going to do the same exact toolkit setup that you have? Same exact. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm oh, going to take it off. Yeah, because you don't need it for the end. I don't need it in my house. Yeah, right. I, right. I, I, that's actually the funny thing. It's like, I don't need that. I don't need any of the hydration stuff. I just have oh. a table. I literally, yeah. I'm just going to yeah. take it off and, yeah. and uh, exa exactly. Okay. And I don't so, even need, I don't even need a rear wheel anymore. Like that, yeah. the wheel that's sitting behind me, that's yeah. off because that's my, yeah. Like, that that's the wheel that goes on my bike. Mm -hmm. I don't need that anymore. No, I was actually thinking in the front wheel of just getting like a, a, a you know maybe like the kicker climb or something like that. Yep, yep. It's like four hundred bucks. Yeah. Then I can take that front wheel off. I don't. Yep. I don't need that. Don't need that. No, that's right. That'll be the that'll be the new training wheel. Mm -hmm. The old training wheel will be the new training wheel. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so then uh, to, to, to do tires, obviously. Okay, so when when you threw out this uh, topic. I wasn't exactly sure what you're doing. So this is, I wrote down, you know, so you got to have training tires and racing tires, but you already have that then. Yep. Everything's all set there. And the same thing with wheels, you got training and racing wheels already. And the other question I was going to ask is, uh, did the new bike uh, fit your travel bag? But obviously it's the same bike, so. It's the same bike. And and the best part is, is like, I think I probably told everyone this at, at one point, but I have basically have a kit of all the bolts on my bike. Mm -hmm. And at one point, I think I bought like 30 of every bolt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. Like, I, I just don't ever want to be like, oh, I wanna replace this or whatever. Like I have every single bolt yeah. and the bolts are all the same. Mm -hmm. And I even have a little kit that when I travel to a race that yeah. has every single bolt. Okay. And I think I told you this, maybe when we did the bike packing that I have, so those bolts I only use when I travel. Mm -hmm. So they're in my kit. Uh, so when I get to the race, I have a brand new set of bolts. Mm -hmm. Put the bolts all in that I need, but I also have spares of anything that doesn't come off. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, that's super convenient. Um, I even have like extra uh, bearings for like the, the 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 head tube. Yeah. That's all the same. So I have like that's a spare set of head bearings already. Mm -hmm. um, I have the backup bottom bracket. Like it's just, you can tell the wife they're saving all this money by buying this new frame. <laughs> My wife is so supportive. I told her I bought a bike and she cheered for me. Yeah, I love it. She's love like, it. yeah, good. Cause well, honestly, I, I've been looking for a while and I was like, one of the things I was doing like when I turned 50, is like, I'm going to yeah. buy a new bike cause it's been six years. And, yeah. and I, we haven't talked, we talked about this offline, but one of my concerns is, uh, and why I bought a new bike and about the same bike, but was carbon fatigue yeah we right. did talk about how strong carbon is but mm -hmm. six years of traveling around the world with that bike yeah right, and right racing and riding it and and i've ridden that bike way more than my road bike i have a road bike mm -hmm. but i've ridden that bike so many thousands and thousands of miles i'm gonna guess 50 to sixty thousand miles yeah right well, maybe not that much maybe 40 to fifty thousand miles mm -hmm. And I can't tell you how many times it's been in like in an airplane being crushed yeah, and, right. and so, and carbon fatigue is a real, it's a real mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. And so, and just being on the trainer, you know, having it, you know, on the trainer and, and, and I don't know if people realize, but there's a lot of fatigue that goes into your frame, especially when you're sprinting on a trainer. Yeah. And I do a lot of, you know, I do a lot of racing on that bike on the trainer. And so I was just like, you know what, it's, it may be more like I'm a cra I'm crazy thinking about that, but I don't want to be in a situation where my bike breaks and they're in, in, you know out there on the road and I get seriously injured. So I think some frames I haven't looked at in a while, but uh, some frames were at one point not uh, covering warranty for yep. um, you if you put your bike into a trainer. It's true. Yeah, wow. there were several bike manufacturers were, were were basically saying that you void your warranty if you put yeah. it in a trainer. Yeah. Yeah. because they weren't they, they weren't designed to be mm -hmm. especially these you know i think they were designed for like the wheel on yeah. uh, trainer but the you know we're all you know, a lot of people on the direct drive trainer mm. and the stresses especially in the in the seat stays mm -hmm. um can be quite significant uh especially during a sprint now maybe not me because i'm relatively light mm -hmm. and i have a horrible sprint <laughs> When you only put out 700 watts, it's not like, you know, a big deal, but, no. uh, but there are people that, you know, on a trainer can put out 2000 Watts. Oh yeah. yeah. And um, I can see, you know, carbon fatigue happening and, mm -hmm. and breaking yeah. frames on, yeah. on trainers. But I, I, 
you know, I, I do think that that was, you know, that was part of my thought process was, mm -hmm. was that. And then part of it honestly was like, will I ever be able to get a brand new high end frame with that's not disc break? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll be able to get a used one, but one that's still factory sealed and, yeah, right, and right. with a warranty and everything. Because honestly, there is none. You cannot buy a high end bike anymore from any reputable manufacturer that doesn't have a disc, does mm. have disc brakes. And, you know, I think honestly that the, the bike industry has, is shoving this down triathletes mouths, whether they mm -hmm. want it or not. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. the research doesn't support it. No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just bike manufacturers are like, well, this is sexy and new and we'll sell new bikes because, mm -hmm. you know, it's something new and people think they have to have it. But like I said, when, when we started, I just have never been in that situation where I really felt I needed them. Oh. They're, they're heavier and they're not as aerodynamic. It's, mm -hmm. it's that, that is, I don't think, um, I don't think there's any denying that right now. Well, I'll tell you as a heavier rider, it's nice to have confidence in the braking power, especially with uh, when I had my carbon rim brake wheels. Yeah, and, uh, I did not have confidence in, in being able to to really control. And yeah, when we went and did uh, Zell Amsey, uh, that was uh, that was not a lot of fun on on uh, my carbon rim brakes. But well, let's we, add a piece that you were on a black market. Yeah, carbon that's rim right. Brakes. That's right. Totally right. black market, <laughs> and I think that was part of it. Yeah, I mean, I because I, Todd, you know, our friend Todd had the same issue. Yeah, yeah, and he was on basically the same wheels you were on. Yeah, and I, I, the people that I, well, the people that I know are you and him that struggled mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. were on um, full carbon black market. Yeah. That's right. Wheels. It did not dissipate heat very well. <laughs> yeah. Well, another thing is, wow. is, is I, I, we actually read a ton after that and to figure out what was going on. And um, the, the tolerances on some of those black market wheels, um, as far as uh, high points mm -hmm. on the brake track. Mm. So, um, you know what I mean by high point? So, the, if the brake track should be completely flat. Right, right. And if your wheel gets out of true, Mm -hmm. it won't be completely flat anymore and um or if it's manufactured not perfectly it won't be perfectly flat and then you'll get areas where you get more heat and less heat mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the rim yeah. and so that could have been an issue uh with you as well as it yeah. either out of true or the manufacturer process wasn't as um as stringent as far as no as that. totally and and i and i'm i don't doubt that at all and and for people who don't know coming down Zellum Hill, uh, I was breaking and Todd did this as well. Breaking up. Uh, he did it during practice, fortunately. No, he did it during uh, the race too, by the way. Oh, did, oh, did he? Okay. Yeah. It happened. And my, twice. my wheel heated up so much that it blew out the tire, the tube, and that blew off the, uh, the bead that held the tire on. And so that, that was pretty much a, a toasted, uh, ride at that point. But, uh, but on top of that, um, I, I and I do even with those brakes. Um, I did not have the confidence in braking in general, even when I was commuting. Okay. Yeah. And so what I do like about the disc brake, and and if I get a road bike, I'll definitely get disc brakes on that. I'm not going to hesitate on there because that's a nice. I just like that feature to to have that confidence in the. Um, and my road bike has disc brakes. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, but it's different, right? Like that's yeah. like I used to commute. That's right. And I definitely want really good braking around the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I'm going to go do some like crazy mountain climb and descent, chances are I'm, yeah. if, it's, if it's steep, yeah. I'll probably be on that bike. Although yeah. I've done a lot of on my time trial bike. Um, and then the disc brakes are nice for that. But yeah. really, I mean, if you think about it and all the triathlons we've done, mm -hmm. other than that race in Austria, mm -hmm. I can't think of too many that had technical descents like that. No. So. Nice did as well, but not, yeah, but it, um, but then some people also say like going into a U-turn, I mean, you, you, mm -hmm. one of the things you can do is you can slow down later mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you're on disc brakes. Yeah. So yeah. maybe there, maybe there's that, but yeah. the, once again, how many U-turns do we have in a typical? No, that's right. Typical yeah, so it, it is interesting that the industry has shifted over to, um, disc brakes for time trial bikes. It just, it, yeah, it's, I honestly uh, think it's just so they could sell more bikes. 
Yeah. <laughs> I really do. I just, or more wheels. Well, the thing is, is that a lot of the bike manufacturers aren't wheel manufacturers. No, right. That's what's funny. Yeah. Okay. And then I asked, I asked John Thornham about this, um, about the cost, because I'd actually heard that part of the deal was that making a disc wheel, a disc brake wheel was a lot cheaper. Mm-hmm because they don't have to have basically, you know, what we're talking about, the, uh, the manufacturing quality on the, on the brake track doesn't have to be so good. And then the, the composites in that section where we actually, where the brake pad attack or, um, complies with the, with the, with the rim mm-hmm. doesn't, doesn't have to be as good basically. Cause you don't have that anymore. Mm. And then, uh, it also opened it up for manufacturers to change shapes a lot. Um, because they didn't have to deal with the brake track. So, you, yeah. and then you can go wider. That, that I was just going to mention that on the fork, especially. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so like my, my, my bike can only, it can't handle, I can only go up to a 28 in or 28 mm-hmm. mil wheel or, mm-hmm. or tire, tire right. which is fine. I mean, 28 yeah. seems like it's, yeah. you know, I like to ride on 25s, but I mean, more, more and more people are going to 28s and mm-hmm. my road bike has 28s and I like it around, around town. Mm-hmm. But um, so there are the limitations there. I mean, you got a disc wheel on a on a road bike, you can go to some really wide tires yeah, and right. wide rims. Right. So it provides a lot more options. Mm-hmm. Well, what, and what wheels? What 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 width wheels are yours or tires are yours? Twenty fives. Twenty fives. Yeah, yeah. And can your bike do? Because you have disc brakes, can you go quite significantly wider? I I could. I've been wanting to go to thirty two, but uh, oh, I really? was ready to order them but they were back ordered for whatever period of time and so i, I need to go back and look and see if they're available now you're gonna go to 32 i oh man that's that's getting really wide yeah i know that'd be love balloon tires so <laughs> yeah and then and, and tubeless uh no i have not i have not made the jump to tubeless that that's like you rim brake to disc brake i i i can't i can't do it so i'm contemplating going tubeless are you yeah mm-hmm. just contemplating it i i'll probably i'm gonna try it and just mm-hmm. see mm-hmm. um you know obviously some people love it and some yeah. people don't like the mess but yeah. Yeah. yeah so we'll see we'll we'll see about that uh especially if i do buy another front wheel mm-hmm. i'm sure I'll, i'm sure it'll be tubeless compatible everything yeah yeah, yeah. tubeless Great. compatible so mm. All right, John. Well, we seem to talk for another hour. We figured yeah. this. Uh, we figured it out. You've convinced it. me to buy twelve speed. <laughs> um, so this is the the worst part is when I when I put all these components on the components are going to cost more than the frame. I know, isn't it? It's amazing. And there's <laughs> and there's no real sales on the components. You not right now. They are what they are. It's just uh, you you can't. And if you find it cheaper, it's probably because they've taken something out that's supposed to be there. So yeah, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna pay for this. Um, yeah. But once again, fortunately, I got such a good deal on the frame that yeah. I feel like I'm still winning. And actually, if you think about it, I'm actually if I actually do spend more money on the components in the frame, I did really good on the frame. Yeah, that's right. That's right. right. So, <laughs> awesome uh, well, stuff. Congrats on the bike. Thank you. It'll be fun to build it up. All right. Hey, have a great weekend. Um, yeah. I think there's a big swim tomorrow, right? Uh, yep. Everyone's talking about it. So yeah. swim at the at Boulder Beach tomorrow morning. Oh, yeah, Lake Mead River. <laughs> is it supposed to be nice tomorrow? I haven't even looked. You know, I haven't checked the weather. It's raining on this side of town right now. So hopefully All right. well, hope it's fun out there. I will not be uh, making the trek across town. No, um, no. We're, we're actually, we're off to California for, oh, good. for good. the break. So get out of the heat. Yeah, oh, that's so. Nice. I gotta, I gotta tell you, I, I, I commuted pretty much all week, mm-hmm. and, and those afternoon ride home, I forgot how bad that was. <laughs> oh, I know. And it's, it's been uh, so humid. Like I'm just yeah, getting home, yeah. and I'm just like, oh my gosh, an hour, and I'm exhausted. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not even riding hard. It's just, man, it's, it's the humidity, and I humidity. sweat so much more right now. Yeah. So I'm literally. Like, yeah. at the, stopping at a light, and I have one bottle that's just for pouring water on me, one for yeah. drink, right? Yeah. Oh, I got it. Yeah. So, anyways. Okay. Talk soon. Okay. Bye, John. Bye.